I'm about to get started on the checkup practice problems, but before I do so, I want to go back to example 22 from the notes. Real quick, you could use the shapes line function and actually insert a line for a graph that is much prettier than the ones I drew earlier. So just to give you an idea, here's my X and Y axis, and now I can go make a sketch. Let's go find the green where that same function I drew before may look something like that. And then we could use the drawing function just to put a, an arrow on the end, something like that. Now I'm going to go down and do this one using the drawing, the shapes function for the line. There's my x and y axis, and then I can go and draw in the parabola. Something like that, where we're beginning at 4 and going up from there. Um, we also could write the equation of a function. Uh, so we could say that this is y equals to x squared plus 4. So you're beginning at that y-intercept of 4 and going up. And then this guy right here that's stopping at the 0, we might say something y equals 2x plus 4. Uh, but with a domain, uh, sorry, a range restriction, a domain restriction from negative infer infinity to zero. So it's for all x values of negative infinity up to zero. And it stops right there at four, for example. Okay. All right. Now going into these practice problems, these are going to go a little bit quicker because this is just asking the domain and range. I'm sorry. This is just asking whether it's a function or not a function. So here we go. Looking at this first graph, is it a function or not a function? If I do the vertical line test, I'm noticing that this is touching in two places, that there's actually, for every one input or one x value, there's two outputs. So I'm going to go right here and say label. This is not a function. If you use the vertical line test, it touches twice. or for each input, there are more than one output. So it's not a function. Let's look at the next one. Try the vertical line test. Only touches once. The answer for if this is a function or not is on the next page. This one is a function for each input there is only one output if we use the vertical line test it only touches once so yes it is a function okay vertical line test on this one touches once Each input, there is only one output. If we use the vertical line test, it only touches once. For questions four to five, determine whether the table of values that it's a function or not. So instead of a graph, it's now giving us a table. So I'm looking at the x values, and I notice there are no repeating x values. So for every input, there's only one output. So 
there are no repeating x's for each input, there is only one output. No repeating x's in the table. We are good to go. Yes, it's a function. Here's another table where we do see the repeating x's. This one is not a function. For each input, there is more than one output. One has this output and this output. Two has this output and this output. There are repeating x's. Several inputs, there are two outputs. So therefore, this is not a function. There are repeating x's in the table, so this is not a function. For question six to nine, find f of one. Remember that a function can be represented with a graph, a table of numbers, or a formula, or words. So f of one. We're going to go out to 1 on the x, and we're going to follow it up to the function here, f of 1 equals 2. Sorry guys, three. If I follow that up just to see where it touches, I'm getting that f of one equals three. All right, what does f of one equal here? We say that f of one equals 1.3. What does f of 1 equal here? So 9 parentheses, plug in that 1, minus 1 squared. Remember I'm using a shift 6 to get to the squared. And then plus 3 parentheses 1 to the third. So simplifying this, we're going to say equals 9 times 1 makes 9. 1 squared or 1 times 1 is just 1. And 1 to the third, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, times 3 gives us just 3. 9 minus 1 is 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. f of 1 equals 11. Every day during January, Joshua ran two miles. Let x represent the date in January and f of x represent the total number of miles Joshua had run by the end of that date. So, how many miles on that first day? We're just going to say two if he ran two per day. We would say in this function, f of x represents the number of miles Joshua had run by the end. Of the x day. Because Joshua ran two miles by the end of the first day, F of 1 equals 2.
For questions 10 through 15, we're doing domain and range. So it might not fit in this little box on yours, but we're going to try it. So the domain goes all the way from negative infinity to infinity. And the range goes from negative infinity all the way up to three. These aren't fitting very nicely in this box, so I'm just going to put them next to it. So here's my domain, here's my range. All right, for the next one, the domain goes from all the way from negative infinity, and then it stops here at this stopping point of three. Then it starts up again right after the three and keeps going. So we're going to say that the domain goes from negative infinity to three, not included, and then it goes from three to infinity. So that's my answer for domain for that one. For the range, it goes all the way from negative infinity up to zero. Notice again, there's no values at zero. And then it goes from zero up to infinity again. So for my range, we're going to say from negative infinity to zero. And then from zero to infinity. Domain of this one goes from two to six. Both are closed dots. And range of this one goes from six up to 18. Also closed dots. Domain of this one needs to be listed out because tables want the domain to be listed out as individual discrete dots. So negative three, negative two, Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two. Oops, I got an extra one in there. That's your domain. Range is going to just be five. Remember that if there's a repeating number, we only have to state it once. That one does fit in the box. Okay, so number 14, this is really like a higher level one that. Um, Again, we're just being exposed to with this idea of down here there, there being some excluded number. So we want to say that all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 4 on this one. So how would I say that in interval notation? I'm going to say from negative infinity to negative 4. And then union from negative four to infinity. Here we can have a five minus five giving us zero, but um, you know we don't want a negative number to happen there under the square root. So our domain for this one. is it just can't go below five because four minus five would be negative one. So it has to be five and greater. So my domain is five to infinity.
and my range is going to start at that y-intercept but notice there's a negative in front of this right now so that means it's really going from the bottom up to that 10 this time so we're going to say that the range goes from negative infinity up to And if you need to put this kind of a function into Desmos and see what it looks like in order to do the domain and range, feel free to input this into Desmos if that makes it easier for you. Suppose you work as a clerk at a local store earning $6 per hour, the amount of your weekly paycheck before taxes could be written as this. What is the independent variable in this function and what does it represent? The independent variable in this function is x, and it represents the number of hours worked. And then what does the de dependent variable represent? It represents the amount of money on your weekly paycheck. dependent on the hours you worked. What is a reasonable domain for this function and why? You could work zero hours during a work week. Most people work about 40 hours, but people can work overtime. So maybe we could say, I don't know, what's the most people work, like 80 hours a week? from zero to 80. And so to write that in interval notation, we'd say from zero to 80. And I'm including both those values because it's possible you do work both. What's a reasonable range? So if you worked zero hours, you would get zero paycheck. And if you worked 80 hours at $6 an hour, 80 times six gives us 480. So that would be the max you could work you could get paid based on your max input. Worked zero hours, you would get paid zero. If you worked a maximum number of hours, six dollars an hour, you'd make four eight. What does f of 20 equals 120 mean in the context of this? It means if you worked 20 hours, you would get paid $120. Now it's giving me this function and it wants me to find each of the following. So g of a, instead of plugging in a number, it's now asking me to plug in a variable. So I'm going to go g, nope, go get the equation. g of a equals, everywhere that there's a t, we're now going to put an a. So 3a minus 5 to the power of 2 plus 4t minus 1. If I multiply out this, it gives me 9a squared minus 15a minus 15a again and plus 25. Negative 5 times negative 5 is plus 25. Plug in an A for 4T. Now I'm just going to combine all these like terms. A squared, there's nothing else to combine. I just get 9A squared. Let's go put all the regular A's together. Negative 30A plus 4A. 
please me with negative 26a and then minus 1. Oops, 25 minus 1 is plus 24. Final answer, plugging in A for all of those spots. There we go. This work all goes for letter A right here. So I'm going to go ahead now and drag this down. Oh, it won't let me. So we'll just know that this A is up here. And then the B, I'll go ahead and insert down here. G of A plus 2. Now I'm going to plug in A plus 2 in all those spots. Um, this one's kind of a complex one that I'm just going to leave on the answer key here when I attach it, but I don't need it to be in this video for time purposes. If f of x equals this, then what was f of what equal to? So if you notice all the places where x was, there's now a root x. So I'd say f of x must be equal to neg uh, root x. So everywhere that there was an x, there's now a root x. What is the meaning of the statement f of 1,000 equals 50? A retail store advertises a sale on popular children's toys during the month of November. The number sold n is a function of the amount spent. So on uh, marketing, on advertising. So when we say f of 1,000 equals 50, we're saying, saying that this means that spending $1,000 on advertising, the store sold 50 of this particular toy. Assume that that is true and that the cost to consume each of the item is $5. Did the retailer make a wise use of the store's advertising budget? Explain. The retailer did not make a wise choice with this advertising budget because if they sold, 50 of them times the $5 it took to make it. And that equals $250 that they earned. But they spent $1,000 on advertising. So they lost money. They should have found a cheaper way to advertise this if the thing was so expensive to make and it was being sold, in other words, uh, for this. So if they only earned $250, but they spent $1,000 on advertising, not a good idea. That's it. Thanks for listening.